Good day, all. Uh, today is, I have no idea what day is today. Wednesday, maybe, or it could be Tuesday. Uh, we are having uh, injector test day today. I'm getting some injectors done for a couple of customers and sending them out the door. But um, I had uh, one of my customers ask me a question the other day about uh, changing fuel pressure uh, at the racetrack, of course, because they're out of injector. So we raise the differential pressure to increase the volume that the injector can deliver. And they were shocked to find out that at an idle, they actually had to add fuel, which seems counterintuitive at, at first glance. But I thought since I had um, a pair of these, uh, well, I had a whole set, a six, set of 16 Atomizer 850 injectors on the flow bench, and I was testing them anyway, I thought I would illustrate what happened and hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. I don't know if anyone else has ever experienced this. I certainly have. The answer is actually reasonably straightforward, but let me show you what it looks like when you run two different fuel pressures. So we'll flip this guy around here. Right, so there's my old 68 Chevelle with a quarter inch of dirt laying on it because I don't ever get to play with my own stuff anymore. Anyway, okay, so this is, this represents the flow curve from a billet atomizer 850 pound per hour injector. The dark blue line was a flow test at 90 PSI differential, and the light blue line was a flow test at 110 PSI differential pressure. And you could see obviously that when the fuel pressure is greater, the injector flows more fuel, which isn't too much of a shock, uh, particularly up here at the top of the flow range where the injector uh, can't recover and basically stays wide open. And we have a difference in flow rate there of uh, 2,642. That is uh, volume per pulse. So that's microliters per pulse. Uh, and 2,384 at 90 PSI. Now, that happens to follow along nicely with the standard um, square root of the pressure differential calculation. So uh, if we were to take 2,642.59 microliters per pulse and divide it by 2,384.07 microliters per pulse, we get um, 1.108 as a ratio or a 10% uh, difference in volume 10.8 in this case percent difference in flow volume um, based on those two numbers and that's what we actually measured with a differential pressure of 90 psi and 110 psi so uh, if we take the standard mathematic calculation that everyone uses where you take the uh, big fuel pressure 110 in this case and divide it by 90 uh, and that's a 22% difference. However, we have to take the square root of that difference. And that gives us 1.105 or 10.5%. So you could see uh, within the uh, repeatability of our equipment here that we are right on par with that predicted increase in fuel flow when the injector is wide open. But what happens when we go to the other end of the, of the range where the engine is idling, I've got my phone cord here bothering me. Uh, when we go down to a lower pulse width, like let's say, well, I don't know, here's three milliseconds. And let's look at the volume difference in delivery between the two at three milliseconds. You notice that they're not that much different. I mean, certainly they're not 10% different. Uh, 258 microliters per pulse versus 253. So what's going on there? Well, what's happening is, if you look at the angle that these two injectors draw on this screen, uh, this is pulse width this direction and flow rate this direction, you can see that the slope or the angle of the injector when it has 110 PSI is greater. So in other words, it's rising faster as we go up in pulse width, this light blue line. And so the angle of that line having a greater increase in flow per time we turn it on means that the intersection point down here at the bottom where it runs into zero flow will actually be moved over that direction, 
right? And so what that means is that the offset of the injector will be larger when we've increased the fuel pressure. And in fact, if I go over here to my offset, offset worksheet, we could see the calculated offset between the two is 0.93 milliseconds of offset when it's at 90 PSI and one millisecond when it's at 110 PSI. And so what you've, what you've got is the injector effectively as you raise the fuel pressure does this and you end up with actually less flow at a lower pulse width number um, because the offset has changed. So if you don't account for the change in the offset, you'll end up with less fuel flow through the injector um, or an equal amount of fuel flow through the injector, especially down at low pulse widths, like down by an idle pulse width. Um, if we were to zoom in, and this is pretty filtered on this slow end because of the way I do the test, but you could see that the 110 PSI trace in light blue is actually below the flow rate of the trace at 90 PSI. And that's, again, because the offset has changed. Uh, the, slope, the slope got greater, and with a different offset, it actually delivers less fuel volume for a given pulse width. And that's why it's important to account for the offset when you change the fuel pressure. If you fix the offset, then you're gonna be able to have uh, a correct fuel flow uh, map if your map was tuned correctly at the, at, with, at the first fuel pressure and you account for your change in, in flow rate of the injector and the offset, then it'll be correct at the other fuel pressure also. You can see there's an intersection point here about, where is that, maybe, Maybe right here, they kind of cross each other at about two and three quarter milliseconds, something like that. What was that? Yeah, 275, right? And they are 90 and 110 PSI, damn near equal in volume per pulse. And you gain by the pressure difference uh, as the pulse width goes up, but if you don't account for that offset, and of course the dead time and all that other stuff that changes when you increase the fuel pressure, you will not get the increase in fuel flow that you think you're going to get. So that's why when you're at the racetrack and you say, hey, I'm almost out of injector, let me turn the fuel pressure up so I can get some more flow rate up at this end of the range. If you don't account for, again, the change in the offset as well as the slope, then you don't, you're, not, you're going to end up with, with a different amount of fuel going into the engine than you think you're going to get when you raise the pressure because you effectively make it harder for that injector to open, or at least in the case of this injector. And this injector happens to be a billet atomizer 850. So hopefully this is reasonably clear. Uh, maybe it's not that clear, um, but hopefully it, it, it'll go a ways towards explaining what, um, what my customer experienced at the racetrack. And anybody else that's run into it, maybe it gives you a little bit of a clue as to what's going on. Um, if, if you were to change the actual size of the injector, you would then expect to change the offset and the slope of the injector, that data, and raising the fuel pressure, it's the same problem. You know, obviously we know the injectors perform differently at different voltages. They also perform differently at the same voltage um, at different fuel pressures. And so this is the same injector tested at 18 volts um, at both 90 and 110 PSI. So that's today's today's uh, live session. Uh, hopefully it was informative. And if it wasn't, well, shit happens. It didn't cost you anything, did it? All right. Thank you for tuning in and check back in next time. We'll see you soon. Signing off.